Today I'm going to show you how to enable UI for use with the new input system. So first, make sure you have the new input system installed. So go to Window, Package Manager, then under Package Manager, go to Unity Registry, and just scroll down until you see Input System, and you'll want to install it. There will be a Install button here. And just click Yes for the pop-up to restart the editor. All right, so first we want to add a UI. So right-click in the hierarchy and add a UI. And so I'll just be adding an event system right now. So an event system basically handles the input events. It listens for your input and then sends out the event to you. And so you'll see here that usually we have a standard alone input module here and we'll want to replace this with the new input system module because this uses the old input system so just click this button here and basically you're done you've enabled the new input system to be used with UI. I'm just going to go over a couple of other things. So you see here that we have a couple actions here and these are your events so when you point you do left click middle click these are the actions that it corresponds to and so you can actually change these actions in the actions asset you can double click that and it'll take you to the action asset corresponding to those controls. Then if you go to the UI action map, you can see all of your actions here. So let's say click in the drop down button. It corresponds to left button, tip for the pen, touch for touch screen and trigger for XR controller. If you want to change these, you can easily change the path or add your own. And if you assign your own action map, this module will automatically assign the actions to their corresponding controls, depending on the name. So if you name it click, it'll try to match that with the left click. If you name it scroll wheel, it'll match that with the scroll wheel. And so just to test it out, you can right click and add a UI here. So we can add in a button and let's just name it button. So I've just centered this button here and I'm gonna put the pressed color to red so we can see it. Now when we press play, you'll see that I can press on it normally. I also want to make it known that there's three types of inputs for the UI. There's pointer type input, which is clicking down, usually with your left click, right click, some sort of pointer. And then there's navigation type input, where you navigate through the menu based on some input. So let's say you're navigating the menu using the WASD keys, that would be a navigation type input. And then we have a tracked input, which is more for XR controllers and head mount and displays. And it acts like a pointer type input. And so that leads to these two things here. So move, repeat, delay. So when you do navigation type input, let's say you're moving with your keys, this is the delay between the first action you do and the repeated action. So once you perform that first action, it will wait 0.5 seconds before doing it again if you've pressed it before that time frame has ended. And then after that, if you are continuously repeating it, this is the delay between that repeat that you have to wait before pressing down again or it registering that you press down. So there's two other cool things I want to mention about the new input system is that you can add on-screen button and on-screen stick. Basically, these are best for maybe if you're making a mobile game and you use the joystick to move and the button to jump or the button to move. It kind of acts as if a controller and you're assigning the controller values to it. So it doesn't act like a UI per se, but it basically pipes the input from the UI to your action. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean. So let's make a UI here. Let's make an image. Let's call it stick. And for the source image, I'm just gonna choose a circle here and I'm just gonna move it to the side. All right, and now for this on-screen stick, we can add a component. If you type in screen, you'll see there's an on-screen button and stick. Let's add that stick. And you can see that we have a movement range, which is basically how much the joystick can move around and its control path. So we'll have to assign a control path here. So here, when we click here, this is basically the action that this input will be piped to. And so we want this to behave kind of like a controller. So we can go to gamepad and let's put it as the left stick of the controller. And let's do an example for the button. So let's add a UI image. I'm adding images because this acts as its own sort of UI. So let's say this is our button and then we can add an on-screen button to this game object and let's add a control path here and let's put a gamepad and let's say that we pressed the south button of the gamepad which those are the four buttons on the right side let's say we press the bottom one and just to verify that these values are working let's open up the input debugger so window analysis input debugger i have a whole video on this if you're interested all right and now if we just place this here and we press play you'll see that under our devices section here we have a gamepad button that we can press to see all the gamepad values that are currently being executed. And so I'm just going to bring this down here so we can see this better. I didn't really center my UI well, so I'll just put the resolution high. So now let's check the button itself. You'll see that currently it's zero. 
But if we press this button, you'll see that now it is one. So it'll act as if we press the gamepad. Same for the joystick, we can move it around and you can see that it's limited on how much you can move and that's the movement range of 50. And if we go to the left stick here, you'll see that the value changes. So this is how to use UI with the new input system. It's basically very similar to the old one. You just have to enable it and you can also override the values if you wanted to. And I also showed you a quick bonus on how to add a joystick and a button. Let's say you're making a mobile game and these are consistent controls. You'd probably want to use these on screen buttons or sticks. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. These videos are made possible by my patrons. Thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And with that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the enthusiastic tier, we have Monocraft, Crimson, Alex, Steven, Atlas, and Mikhail. Thank you so much. And then the dedicated tier, we have Tyler. Thank you so much for all of your support. It's very much appreciated. I'm able to push and make these videos because of your support and it really helps. If you're interested, the link is in the description. I offer source code, early access, and exclusive Discord channel. And if you aren't already in our Discord channel, make sure to join. We have memes, you can ask questions, or just chat. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.